Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Uh, and so has my guest this week, iconic porn star, uh, content creator, producer, actor, um, spiritualist, tarot card reader. Holy fuck, Adam Russo, how the hell are you? I'm I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I, yeah. yeah, just got fucked by champ. Yeah, how was that? I feel very relaxed. <laughs> my, my hole is overstimulated, which I love. I told him, I said, I... I you know, I need, because I don't have that, you know, big dicks like that in me that often anymore. And I don't like have a boyfriend. So, and I usually want to fucking more of the boys. So like, yeah. So you're, you're like a hot commodity out here. Well, you're a hot commodity anywhere you go, but, <laughs> but the boys love you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. They do. <laughs> yes, they do. But, um, okay. So, so the, the boys love you and you're having a problem because you constantly have to top, but you love bottoming. I do love bottoming. I do. I mean, think of me, I was most of my life. I was a top. Um, and during when most of my filming for studios, I was, you know, versatile, but I'd still, you know, like I was dating Cutler X who had a huge ass dick. And, mm. Um, you know, I was getting fucked with some big, pretty big dicks yeah. fre- frequently. Now that's not such the case. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still get fucked. It's just, uh, you know, I wish they're, you know, I, you, champ's pretty massive. You want them so, big. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's like, I need somebody to reach the second hole. Not everybody reaches that second hole. And I was like, oh yeah. Okay. So, um, but I felt good. Yeah. That was something else. <laughs> so I'm very relaxed. <laughs> well, good. As I said before we started, um, the best thing about having you on three seasons at this point, we're in, mm. this is season three of the podcast, but the, the best thing about having you on is we've gotten through your introduction or rather introduction for, for my audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and here we are. And you predicted uh, season one, you said there's going to be a major shift mm-hmm. in, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, it happened. <laughs> yeah. And here we are, hopefully at the end of it. It's, um, well, it's a progression. I mean, a lot, this year is also about a lot of people waking up. Um, we've just kind of spiritually speaking, we've just wrapped up a cycle and there's new cycles at the beginning for people this year. And it's funny that we're actually filming this in Aries season because that's the first Zodiac sign of the, uh, of the chart. Um, so that's, um, the full card in tarot taking okay, that leap okay. of faith. So new cycles. And unfortunately for some people uh, who didn't do their work are getting their karma and it's not good. And for those people that were doing the work and trying their best to navigate their lives and things, they are getting, you know, things presented to them as, you know, gifts mm-hmm. to, from the universe. So it's interesting to see because I kept telling people this and friends of mine and like, now my friends can actually see it on the 3d level they're actually oh you were right i was like yeah because the way, the way things are playing out now it's quite interesting to see holy cow yeah yeah so. no i i kind of i didn't know that but i have something similar happening too uh good things mm-hmm. good things and you you mentioned before when you walked in there's good things happening for you as well yeah. uh, you're you're in la now you are acting Right. I'm an actor. Um, I'm not in anything right now at this point. I did a short not too long ago. Uh, I am, wrote, wrote a series, which I'm having other people sort of shop it around. And uh, we're looking at also maybe perhaps a reality show as well. And um, with the tarot. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. Kind of like helping yeah. in, like kind of uh, helping people through their issues. Because the tarot is a, it's almost like a therapy session. Mm-hmm. Like I've had so many people that I've read for say... <laughs> especially for newcomers that have never had a tarot reading they're like at the end of their like they're so overwhelmed with everything that i've said they're like that was a lot i said no, take it all in it's okay it is basically a therapy session for for a lot of people um to go through um it's you know and the funny thing is the, the universe will warn you if things are coming up that you need to avoid things like that um how to get through things it's it literally is a therapy session mm-hmm. for a lot of people um, but you know, it's not like, oh, you're going to have 2.5 children or something. Like that. <laughs> 2.5. Yeah. Um, yeah. Grand success. <laughs> like, oh, uh, no, 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 no. I've had people like, you know, cheating on their, their husband or spouses mm. and like, you know, it's, oh, I'm always like, oh, it's going to be one of those readings. Great. Okay. And then how to sort of navigate that to the person I'm talking to, or, you know, a lot of times people have their, present their own problems. Like the issue is not the other person or the world, it's you. It's unfortunately you. So oh, you have to boy. like sort of uh, do nicely this in tell a them way <laughs> that sort of works for them so they can grow and kind of understand. And then I give them tools at the end to help for meditations and things like that, that can help them move uh, through things. And it's been interesting to see like the feedback from clients afterwards as well. 
you know, like, oh, you know, you, <laughs> you were right about my ex. I shouldn't have taken back. And as soon as I did, he was like, I was like, well, there you go. I said, <laughs> you have free will. <laughs> yeah, no, you could or couldn't. <laughs> you, you don't have to. <laughs> um, your so I I follow your your channel. Mm -hmm. uh, you update like two to three hours, right? Oh, for the readings. No, for the for for the readings, I do like every three to four days. Okay, I present a new new reading, which is usually around twenty minutes long. Um, and those, of course, general collective readings is what the spirit wants to bring out at that time. I'm reading for a certain collective. It may not, it may or may not resonate with people. And again, it's not just romance. It could be platonic business, et cetera, depending on how it fits into how it resonates with you. But a very personal reading is very different. It's a, that's a, that is only you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but some people do say, well, I feel like you're reading the cards just for me. It's because that particular reading is very centered on that particular uh, collective okay. and that person. But, um, and then I, you know, tried to throw a few pit photos in there. Because <laughs> 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 the thing is I just did a little video too on, uh, on, on drugs, unfortunately. And I was like, this is not going to be very popular with me, with a lot of people I know, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, recreational, recreational marijuana is it, are we well yeah, the this is what i've been getting from spirit and spirit wanted me to put this out here and i was like oh okay um there are certain drugs that they just do not want people using at all and they we, they understand that people use drugs and the universe created drugs to to for a little bit of escapism and whatnot yeah, but yeah. even even the ones that they approve of using you still have to do in moderation that's the way the game is and so i'm a realist people do these things especially nowadays trying to escape reality mm -hmm. at least for a mm -hmm. little bit mm -hmm. but the alphabet soup of drugs is definitely a no-no and i hate to say that but it's like the, yeah the g the k the, the yeah the e <laughs> yeah you know i i'm i'm a big recreational marijuana use. i just yeah. got my medical marijuana marijuana is fine for them yeah. uh alcohol cocaine believe it or not yeah so, oh well, well co co cocaine is poppers yeah. strangely enough okay <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, mushrooms. Okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. It's just, it's basically food poisoning, yeah. right? It uh, grows on cow dung. <laughs> it's like all they, natural. They don't like opiates like, you know, heroin and morphine and, you know, Oxycontin or whatever the freaking drug that is. Um, certain drugs like that, they, it, but it is basically a lot of the synthetics they don't love, but there's of course like, you know, morphine and heroin is a natural from the poppy, but they, they're like, no, I think, okay. Like if you're in your deathbed and you need some morphine probably, but <laughs> yeah, at that point, I mean, otherwise no. And I knew that was going to make me very popular because like, Oh, I don't get a You know, I don't have a hangover with G blah, blah. blah. And I'm like, you don't know what the long time first effects are. And the funny thing is they're finding out more scientifically because it does change your chemistry, your brain and everything else these other ones do and literally a scientist wrote back to me on my, on my dms he's like yeah you're you're right about that there is a different change and i was trying to also liken it to just you know when you put good food in your body as opposed to like a fast food joint mm -hmm. now the energy is going to be different like especially like your grandmother your mother or somebody your, your loved one makes food for you it changes energetically the food in front of you so you could also remember that and there's been a lot of studies done on that too with water with food um, it always gets me funny too when you know vegans say, "Well, I'm, I'm saving the planet, I'm not killing a cow," but you're eating the vegetables and which are alive. Yes, and very well know that you're eating them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just can't scream, you can't hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, but once you start having the the aspect of, you know, the funny thing is when they decided to thank the universe for the food, the energy of that, like when they were going to cut up the eggplant or something, calmed down. Wow. It was interesting. And these are, these are actually scientific studies. They, they probe and do all these other things. So I'm not going like far fetched. This is like stuff that's already been in the scientific. Community. Yeah. Which you had mentioned um, in the last podcast. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to know, you, you just mentioned the universe. How do you tap in? Is it, is it, have you, is it something you learn and develop or were you like innately tapped in? You know, I, I almost feel like a sleeper agent that woke up at this point <laughs> because, um, I mean, I was always kind of into this stuff, but never really until I had my dark night of the soul, which is many years ago at this point, several, quite, quite a few years ago. And, um, my abilities keep growing. So my connection with spirit is, is very more, much more on point, like just right there. So energetically I speak to them and everyone's here to do a certain job. All of us have different things. Um, <laughs> I now, I feel them energetically. They will talk to me energetically. Um, I will eventually be able to see them. They haven't given me the, the gift of the sight to see them. But when I see them, which means I'm also going to see the lower vibrational entities as well. Holy crap. So that was all, that was like fun and exciting. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, 
and they the, we, this is all like really strange because i'm like feeling like i'm living a science fi- sci-fi book myself it's like i'm actually able now to destroy lower vibrational entities but i usually have to ask the person and figure it out and the people that i've been doing this for have seen significant changes like i've had people with you know the uh what do you call it the when they're paralyzed when they sleep there's a name for it um not sleep paralysis yes it's okay paralysis. and they've had like demons like it grabbed them at that from childhood like i've had like and i've had to destroy these things like not just shield them but destroy them and they literally dissolve it's kind of it's it can be done remotely it's very interesting but these this was a gift that was given to me and it's funny it's a gift that nobody really can see but the people i'm doing for can feel the difference and notice the difference um, because these things are literally trying to bring people down. They're trying to keep them in a low vibration. And this is one of the things they do. And some of these things have been following uh, these people since childhood, yeah. since they were babies, because they already see the light. Um, and that's also the thing with the drugs, is these drugs, the alphabet suit drugs and whatnot, there's also almost like entities waiting for you to take them. They're like right there to attach themselves to you. Mm. Yeah, that's like one of the reasons meth is so addictive. It's like <laughs> you're not just you getting okay. you're not getting the the, the the drug of the crystal. You're getting so much more. Yeah, <laughs> more than you bargained for too. Much more than you bargained. Holy crap! For. Um, I'm fascinated by um the idea of dark entities or dark things holding on to you. I I absolutely believe in that as well. Yeah. Let's say you have a session. Mm-hmm. Is it just do you see them there or when you're walking down the street? Do you notice that in people? Do you recognize? I can feel, you know, some people when uh, energetically where I'm like not around, I feel different energies. I, like I said, I can't see them yet, but mm-hmm. I will be able to. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, which is really interesting. So when I'm doing, uh, you know, like I, I had somebody, a uh, boy, uh, one of my boys I kind of hang out with, um, stay over. And he, when he's sleeping with me, he was fine. And then he told me finally that he was having the sleep paralysis and whatnot. And he explained more about it. And then I said, Oh God. Okay. And he was at my house and then I tuned in and the thing was waiting outside for him because my, you can, my house is so spiritually protected that no vibrational vibration entities can come in. They dare not to. <laughs> so, um, so he was waiting outside and I was like, okay. And I was like, listen to him. I said, all right, so let me do this. And literally, I, and it's funny, it's like on the third eye, it's almost like sending out a laser beam, like you picture this thing out there and it hits it and it almost, it like dissolves it. But there's a, there's a pushback. Like I'm feeling the energy like in myself as well. Like this pushback, it's, that surprised me when I first did it the first time. I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Did you, do you have to, do you have to cleanse after that? Um, I, I'm so connected that I can literally just push my energy right through. It is really um, you know, it, I do recommend for people to sage, you know, crystals mm-hmm. to help their energy, to clear their energy, to protect their energy. It's very important. I'm just on a different level now because of all the things I've been through, but a lot of people aren't there. Mm-hmm. So I have huge amount of protection. In fact, I have, this is going to be another thing too. And they told me that I could speak freely because this was really about them, not me. I said, I said, you bitches, you want me to talk about you? <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> all right. Because they're very funny. We have powwows. I talked to them like, Hey, you know, like that, you know, big dicks and everything else. I mean, <laughs> seriously, like get in touch with your, 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 your guys, your angels with the universe, because they have a sense of fun, sense of humor. And you are part of the universe. So the universe is there. You can't hide from it. Sorry to say. <laughs> and you have free will to resist your path. Good luck with that. <laughs> but um, so I was buying a new deck of cards and it was the day of the dead cards, the Santa Morte. And um, I bought like two different decks and I'm opening it in the kitchen because it had like plastic seal wrap around it, you know, shrink wrap. And I'm taking the business. And of course I cut myself, right? I'm like, all right, fine. Open the deck. Why not? That night, I had a little powwow in the kitchen with my, my guys. And then people feel like they put a camera in my, my house. They're going to think I'm fucking nuts. Put me in a padded room, I'm sure. But I'm like, I don't really care. <laughs> so I've never felt so content, so calm, yeah. and like connected. So I, um, I decided to lay down. I were, you know, go watch TV and lay down. I was watching the show. It was Lock and Key, I think it was. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's um, the keys are made to open sp- uh, spiritual doors. I think you've 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 told me about this Wait, show before. Did I tell you? I don't. Did I tell you about? Okay. Well, if if I did, I'm sorry, but um, no, no, please, because so yeah, the they they one of the points is they have to add their blood to the key when they're making the key. It's a binding spell. And I looked at it and I was, and I literally popped my head up and I said, you guys just didn't bind me to the cards. Did you? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, 
to Santa Marta, <laughs> the angel, you know, of yeah, death. Yeah. And literally that moment I heard, though I walked through the valley of death, I fear no evil, going back and forth. And then I realized why. Because once you have death on your side, there's really nothing to fear. Okay. And it was also part of the, the spiritual stuff I'm doing now, um, because there's also like portals that need to be blocked, things like that. And so once you have like, you know, the archangel of death on your side, there's really nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. And I got up and I shuffled the deck, the thing, and she popped right out. Death popped right out. <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, there you <laughs> go. So um, I've been, she's been very close uh, to me, just, just really wonderful. And my friend got really a little paranoid he's also another white witch but he's on the voodoo side and he's like he's like oh my god santa morte santa morte like and he got freaked out because a lot of people get freaked out by, well you know by death yeah and i was like listen she's not only coming for you like when she needs to make the transition <laughs> otherwise damn <laughs> yeah like, okay you know so and like it's 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 cool it's all fine you know it's it's not a problem and then i was um a couple of days after and i was like thinking about karma because karma is very interesting because you get karma and dharma the good and the bad side of it both depending on what you've done and there's no there's no way around that this is balancing of energies you know so i thought okay and for some reason because this is also how they communicate to me they this popped in my mind i was like is there an entity that controls the karma and dharma and i got a yes and i was like oh okay nobody knows this i don't remember any religion saying this mm -hmm. i mean everyone knows karma is yeah. a bitch However, he goes by the masculine, by the way. <laughs> he's an the asshole. <laughs> so he's, um, and he, he handles both. And I was his, I finally had to like do sort of like the, the, the letter game with him. And his name is Tykel. And he, gets, he just hit me again. He's like, he's so excited when people know who he is. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, it's Tykel. <laughs> so he, because no, you know, nobody knows. Yeah, nobody really wants. talks about it. And, um, so they're kind of like, these two are especially my, my wingmen. So like, you know, and I have like other spirit guides who I don't know yet because I haven't seen them, but I know they're all there. And so when I go out, I'm like, this is the wolf pack where there's a wolf pack going out. Yeah. Tonight. You got like that slow-mo walk, <laughs> walking down the street. <laughs> so, I, and so I'm like, yeah, the wolf pack's going to be, you know, going out. And I tell my friend Katrina, who also, she's in uh, Australia and she reads cards as well. And she's like, yeah, we're the wolf pack and I are going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I have to tell you something you had mentioned about being part of the universe. Yeah. Um, during the pandemic, I, I had a lot of time to spend on myself and uh, for the past 75 days, I've, I did like a total cleanse. Mm -hmm. But even before that, the way I feel about, and I can talk about this with you, mm. and I, I appreciate that. And all of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they can listen, but I, I can talk about it with you and feel comfortable. Yeah. I feel like the more, I don't know if it's in tune or, or what it is that's happening with me, but um, I have this feeling of matter mm -hmm. and basically you and i are the same thing mm -hmm. as this as that mm -hmm. and basically it's just all of us There's and no, the illusion really no separation yeah. Guess, yeah yeah and it's it's what we create but we're just all in this together mm -hmm. and it's it's fucking it's mind-blowing yeah it's absolutely mind-blowing that and then you just meant mentioned um is it santa morte santa morte santa morte yeah. Um, and the fear or the not the lack thereof or not having a fear of death. Every time I get on a plane to fly, mm. I know that nothing, it, well, nothing is in your control right. when it comes to, you know, like anything can happen at any point. It doesn't have to be on that plane. It can be on the drive to the airport or Absolutely. walking down the street. Yeah. Um, but there was insane amount of turbulence to the point where the, the woman behind me was having a panic attack oh, and the six-year-old in front of me was like, are we going to die? And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> but I put my headphones on and I was like, if it happens, it happens, you know? Um, would, would that be comparable to being comfortable with death? Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I've never had a problem with death, even as a kid. You know, they always say, like, you're in a white room and it's sealed. There's no doors or windows. How do you mm -hmm. feel? I'm like, calm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, and we did. We, 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 yeah. we touched on that because 
what it's a great feeling yeah. in, in my opinion like because what happens i mean don't get me wrong i don't like pain and having to get mm-hmm. through that but mm-hmm. like death it just is another transition you'll leave this particular you know flesh and you'll go somewhere else and do something else at some another time and i've been kind of exploring that more with them because we have powwows and i, I try to like you know question answer kind of thing of finding out more about it um you know, but everyone has to have their own particular journey, but it's in, been very interesting because a lot of the stuff that is already from uh, the ancient Egyptians, the, the Buddhists and things, is already there. It's like, it's just uh, saying it again. It's like, there was like, uh, someone mentioned, oh, there's a council that you go in, in front of, like sort of like the Egyptians have the, you know, the weighing of the heart thing, but there's a council in another religion. And I said, is there a council? And they're like, uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> so there's a council that apparently when you die and let's go through. So this this whole like thing that nobody ever sees. And then it, it gets more complex because you're dealing with so many different levels you're dealing with different dimensions. Mm -hmm. You're dealing, you know, (laughs) you're dealing with like, you know, and this is, again, we're going, going back to science, what science is, is discovering, you know? So it's not like really out there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know what you're saying. I was reading this book, part of this whole cleanse too, or this detox that I was doing, it's a mental toughness program was reading 10 pages of a book Mm -hmm. every day, which I found great. And the whole idea is you have the time to do this. You can sit down for a second for 15 minutes and read this book. Mm. One of them was architecture of the afterlife. And it was this guy and you mentioned councils Mm. and um, I couldn't get through it because it was like an uh, an interview form. Mm. Richard Martini, I think his name is. I like, I like what he says when he's in interviews, Mm. but when I read the book, it felt a little braggadocious. He, all he did was, was (laughs) kind of refer back to himself and all the spirits were like, you're doing such a great job. And I was like, okay. I mean, and he had like, he was talking to Bill Paxton. He was talking to a whole bunch of people and they, they would all come back and be like, thank you so much for helping everybody transition. And I was like, they can't all be saying that, but you know, that's, that's just my opinion of it. But I do like a certain amount of things that he did touch on. And yes. the council was one of them. Dimensions was one of them too. Yeah. Holy crap. Like I, yeah, I can't even, I can't even like, you've gotten there. You've under, you understand this stuff. Right. I can't even begin to under like how to how to explain this to somebody that's never there there, been well, there this. there's so much and so much to explain and I'm still learning more as well because I mean the universe will give me what I need to know and apparently I've also um opened up to the Akashic records, which is interesting because it was through meditation and I literally, please, I play with my energy and I circulate sometimes and I, I put it through me and I, f- I feel it through. Like I it's all done in the mind and the energy and I feel it pulsing and whatnot. And this time it went through my stomach like my sac- and then up and out through my third eye. And it just like, it was a beam from my third eye. And I said, and I hit something, I could feel a vibration. I'm like, what did I just do? <laughs> like, and I'm always like playing, like, you know, trying to figure out and like ask them questions. Like, did, was it somebody or someone like, no. And come to, to this, because I was talking to, um, my friend Katrina, she's like, she says, I don't like the Akashic. And then I asked them, it was like the Akashic records. And, but the funny thing is, it's not like I remember anything. Like I don't know anything, but that will open up when it needs to open. Okay. So it's just really bizarre. It's not like I can just sit there and hear like, this is what I discovered. So you, you know? tapped into it, but you have not. Haven't really. Okay. Material. And, but they do this from time to time. Like when I got my new shields, my protection shields, um, they, they gave me that and it took a few days to morph. This is taking longer. It's like, it's everything is in divine timing. Mm-hmm. So it's like the m- more of these gifts are coming out. Like I wasn't like, I who knew I was going to be able to destroy lower entities. I don't know. It just sounds, it sounds so sci-fi, sci-fi but, but it's like, hmm. Hey, I'd watch it. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true, but yeah. I'm like, okay, but it's like nothing I can actually even show you unless you're the person that's with it. <laughs> like, and there's a problem, but I'm like, I don't care. It's like, it, I'm not here to I try to convince anybody of anything either. Mm-hmm. Like you believe what you want to believe. This is what I'm telling you. Like, you know, this is what I'll tell you. But, and the funny thing is, is again, I'm not really saying anything out of the ordinary that's not hasn't been written in ancient texts and things like yeah. that yeah. already so it's all there <laughs> yeah the information's out there whether or not you want to take it or not yeah. right yeah um another thing that uh, i was just thinking about that I, I saw in this book that i kind of thought was an interesting thought mm. the idea that lives are almost accessible through a catalog almost like a filing cabinet or something mm-hmm. And you can go back 
once once you're in a different plane, you can go back and access them and yeah. It's just, I, I think maybe, you know, uh, the, the fact that the guy talks about himself might be one thing, but I definitely was like, I am not ready for this book. <laughs> I don't think that I'm going to be able to comprehend. It, 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 it went too, too many places too quickly for me, whereas I'm, you know, I, I, I think I'm open to a lot of things. Um, you know, I, I'd love to try Akashic Records mm. or, or a reading at least. I'd love to try um, Past Life mm. Regression. Uh, I just... I, I guess uh, I'm looking for where to go for that stuff. Right. I, you know, the thing is like open yourself up to it. It will happen. And this is what we say because th- they will decide when and how you're ready and where you're at with this. And everyone's going to be on their own path. So like you said, if you're, you're, if you're meditating, if you're going into this and ask your, your guides for help and what's the next thing, you know, bring me to these, this new information, which I, you know, and talk to them. And that's how you'll start to receive it because they'll go through synchronicities through people through, you may like open up your computer and there's something about something else mm. that brings you the information you need. So it will happen that way. Um, lots of synchronicities happen. There's nothing, no such thing as coincidence, whether it has something to do with you personally or somebody else or something in play later, there is no coincidence. Mm. These things happen for a reason. And it's funny how orchestrated it really is. Because it all looks like chaos most of the time, but it's not. <laughs> There's order and chaos. <laughs> There's order and chaos. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm like, at this point, I'm just like, you know, my friend was like, is there going to be a nuclear war? Because, you know, the Ukraine thing. And I was like, no, <laughs> there won't be any nuclear war. It's fine. <laughs> I was like, We're, you're fine. I said, even if there was, yeah. just be a ground zero, then just you'll transition easier. <laughs> like, who, wants to, who wants to be in a nuclear winner anyway? Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. All these people with their shelters and stuff. I'm like, really? Do I want to go out and, you know, live with a couple of crazy people who yeah. are, you know, all hoarding food and all? No, I'd rather I'm just, like, nah, I'd rather just that. go out on the first wave yeah. if, if that if if that's what ends up happening yeah i just it, and i'm just like i'm just really calm about these things like i just really it's a whole different viewpoint of everything just very relaxed i mean yeah do i get angry about some things i do i'll feel an emotion of course and then i gotta you know i release it mm-hmm. can't hold on to the shit you can feel them you can feel sadness yes bad, you know, yeah, anger yeah. Or whatever but you just don't hold on yeah, to this you shit. can't stay there yeah you're, you're allowed to feel them because mm-hmm. of your god-given emotions yeah. let me ask you a question for somebody who would think, okay, well, he's talking to himself or he's talking here, like, would it not, and this person is very spirit, uh, religious, let's say, right? right? Talks to Jesus. Would it not be the same thing? It, it, it can. You, the, the only thing is you have to be careful, mm. especially with people, with other tarot readers, psychics and things like that. And not a lot. There's so many good that are really doing the universe's work and really tapped in. But these people have usually gone through dark nights of the soul. They've had to ego deaths, things like that mm-hmm. to get to that point. There's a lot of preachers that, Oh, you know what I mean? Okay. It's not, they're not in, <laughs> no, they're I preaching see. the word, mm. but they're not following yeah. the word. Okay. So yeah. And that's, you know, people that, that have gone through these ego deaths and through all that, that's, there's a different change because you are literally doing this, you know, because you're doing your, your part, what you need to be doing, <coughs> Sorry. but a lot of people don't, you know, you, you know, preaching hate, preaching, you know, different things. I think they have the, 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 you know, the grasp on what the universe wants. You had to be very careful with that, but okay. You make a really, really good point. Cause I never thought about that. Yeah. So you're going to need to be careful where the information is coming from. It's just like, you know, when you watch media, it's like <laughs> there's agendas. Mm. If it resonates with you, and you want to think about this, it's because it's not just about your mind, it's about your heart space. Does this feel right to you? Does it really feel right to you? And then, you know, because some people still get on the bandwagon of like, oh, you know, the hate speech of, of like, you know, you're gay, so therefore you're working with the devil or something of that sort, like, you know, some of those preachers do or whatnot. You got to f- figure it out. Like, why, why are you so in tune with that? Because it sounds to me like you have some work to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you have to be careful on the sources. That's also, you know, you don't want to get too involved with so much of that because those people are on their own journeys as well. They really are. And the universe will trust me, take care of things that, you know, the people are like, Oh, revenge. I want revenge. Honey, the universe has got that and trust me it'll do a much better job than you could ever possibly yeah you know (laughs) i've i've gotten on the kick of no enemies 
And I mm-hmm. granted, I don't think I have I don't think I have any enemies in the board industry <laughs> or in, in what I do right now and in life as well. I mean, I'm sure I have people that I've pissed off or but we're all doing we're all doing our part. We're all a part of this. You're all doing your thing. It's yeah. like, that's what it is. And don't get me wrong, the universe is not there trying to like, you know, be angry. It gives you a certain amount of time to get your shit together and then it'll send you signs mm. little by little. And if it's you're still not paying attention it gets worse. Yeah. You know, okay. the karma gets worse. So it's like, you know, before you, you know, I always imagine like an addict, you just not getting off a certain drug winds up homeless on the street, that kind of thing, you know, or in the hospital because you, the universe gave you all this trying to send people your way to help you and you still didn't do it. So you have to learn, you have to learn the learn. hard way. And that's, it's unfortunate, but it's a lesson for the soul. And that's part of what this soul has to learn. Um, but there are consequences for not following your spiritual path. You know, um, so I just say is like, be the best person you can. Don't, you know, try to do shit to other people yeah. and, you know, live the best life you can and you will be rewarded for it. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing. It's just very, um, just very connected right now. And it's just freaking fabulous because Metatron, which is another archangel was heading my team basically. Um, and now it's, it's literally spirit. It's just heading my team. I was like, Oh, that was a new new thing i was like okay <laughs> so but the thing is it's like these things come in waves of like in, uh, inspiration i'm like uh but and don't get me wrong it's like everything that comes in my mind isn't like they're like no i'm like oh okay great <laughs> like, that was that was um, that was wrong you know that was definitely my thought I'm like okay um and the, the funny thing is is like it's it, you know people are always like well who do you know you're what you're who you're, what you're talking to again about going through that spiritual cleansing it's when you're in this calm relaxed like i just don't worry about anything and there's such a sense of love like mm. the, and i talked to mother earth as well and she's she's like a little girl actually she just vibrates like a little girl she's fantastic love her and because she's a living entity as well people forget that yeah and you know you can feel the energy it's beautiful it's light it's happy it's joyous and you know there's no stress involved with it so there's a very different thing. Like when I told you my friend who was having sleep paralysis, that's how he was like, I'm afraid to move my eyes and you feel the different energy about you, you know? So <laughs> God damn. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what's, um, what's the, where are you moving towards now? I'm, uh, well, I mean, I'm just kind of waiting the universe every time I'm like, guys, I could be doing more. And they're like, patience and i'm like okay dokey. so you have those thoughts too. You, you okay so you you do a lot yeah but you feel like you could be doing i more. can feel like doing more and they're they're funny side i said i'm joking around i said okay universe on a scale of one to three where's my patience level and they're like two i'm like okay great all right <laughs> i said i've been I've always been like this or like mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like okay and apparently i've done this shit before in a different lifetimes and i'm like okay great i'm like you know so like, I feel like sometimes I feel like a little kid like them, like, okay. <laughs> to help other people mm. that let's say would listen to this and, and say, holy crap, I want to, I want to follow this. I want to learn. What would be the first step? I would suggest, I mean, again, everyone's things are going to be different, but I would suggest doing some meditation. You know, there's plenty of guided meditations out there, musical meditation. And um, the best place, if you're not really into meditating, and I don't try to sit in a lotus position. I find the most uncomfortable thing. Lay down. <laughs> you want to be relaxed. And do it before you go to bed or wake up. You know. Meanwhile, I'm sorry. I've been like half bed. lotus this whole time. No, I, no, I, you're good. <laughs> if, you can, if you can do that and meditate, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, but I find for me, it's just like, I'm like, I'm very yeah. uncomfortable. Um, so that I just, and then sort of like, you know, deep breaths and whatnot, and just start talking, just communicate, you know, start manifesting, start talking to your guides. They're always around you, but they can't help you until you ask because it's a free world will world. So <laughs> you need to talk to them. And when you start talking to them, when you start communicating with them, those it'll, the bond is going to get stronger. The more you do it, the stronger the bond starts. And you're going to start seeing synchronicities on the clock, like certain numbers repeating. You're going to start me running into people, new mm-hmm. people, things oh, like okay. to, that may be on the same vibe. It's, it's very interesting to see how it happens, but you need to just open a dialogue. You may not hear them at first, but just know that they are there. They're listening and just start talking, whatever it is you need, whatever you're looking for. If you need inspiration, whatever the deal is. Do you think that this is connected to, 
I don't want to say like coincidence or any, or anything like, but you know how sometimes you you sit there and you're like, oh, I wonder what this person's doing, or wow, I haven't seen this person in a long time, and then you the walk out rings, the door, yeah. yeah, or yeah, you walk out the door and they're there, <laughs> or you know, wow, I, I can't remember what the name of this thing is from my childhood, but I love it, and then you end up seeing it. It happens all the time with me now, and so she might synchronicities are just ridiculously crazy. Um, yeah, it, it happens quite a bit, and like when I think if somebody comes to my mind, I'm like, I have to reach out, which is part of it. Um, so you may be on each other's mind or the universe is needing me to reach out for something because now they have me doing this, you know, the spiritual work too. So sometimes people need that as well. And a lot of, of course, my friends come to me for advice and whatnot, not just to read the tarot, but just, you know, advice. And I try to, you know, give them the best advice that I can. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't give advice to people who don't want it. Mm -hmm. If you come to me, I will certainly give you advice, but I'm not like, Oh, you should do this. Da, 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 da. Like, no, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not that way. I'm like, you should be living your life this way. No, 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 I don't do that. I don't do that. Everyone's got their own path, their own journey. What they want to do is fine. But if you come to me and you're asking my advice, then expect the truth. <laughs> because also when I've been talking to people now, I'll be asking them, you know, if they're asking me questions, I'll be asked, talking, communicating directly yeah. with the spirit and, and I'll be getting yes, no answers. And they'll, they'll be, they'll be giving me information. <laughs> so, oh, so information on the person you're talking to? On information on what's going on. Okay. Things like that, okay. what they're asking for. I've literally, even they've channeled through me. I was with my aunt and I was, we were sitting down, we we're having a great um, afternoon, like evening. And, um, she's, she's very connected as well. Great energy. And I started talking and I was like, we, and I never say we, and I was like, we, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, ew, they're channeling right through me. And they were, they were, they were channeling right through my words. And I was like, kid <laughs> you, you say she's connected. Are you, does this run in the family? Yeah, not, you know, not all. She's always had a very special light. Um, some of the other ones do, some don't like, again, all, not all family members are going to be in that realm. Um, everyone has a potential to connect with spirit, to be there, but everyone may, you know, some people have more spiritual gifts than others. It's not anyone's greater than the other. It's just that that's what they have. That's also the thing about the ego. Just because you have these particular gifts doesn't make you any better than anybody else. Cause we're all here to play our parts. Like I'm basically the servant of the universe. That's kind of what this is. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny you say that. I was just, it, that's another thing that goes through my mind is the idea of, okay, you're, you're a doctor and you make a lot of money, but you're not much more important. You're important because of what you offer, but as a person, right. you're all offering uh, the same thing mm -hmm. outside of uh, economic status, outside of, uh, what you make, where you live, mm -hmm. um, the bigger picture, yeah, basically. Um, wow. Okay. Well, yeah. it's also like trying not to judge people too is another thing. It's like, you know, that that's always like kind of because it can be very ego driven and whatnot. But, and and I tried to like lay out of that, like you know, judging for somebody for what they do, and I you know I will catch myself. But sometimes I'm also like wondering why somebody does something, and I'm like, it's it's more of an a, a, you know analytical kind of thing. Um, as to why, because people sometimes do things because there's a lot of damage there that they're kind of working or have to work through. Some of them decide to do, do it. Some don't. Um, and then you kind of like, okay, what's, what's really going on with this person? Um, but it's not like a judgment, like, Oh, you, you did this. Da, da, da. It's just like, I'm just kind of curious to what happened in the childhood. What, you know, scenario brought, that person to hold on to this pain, which is now manifesting in a different way. Yeah. Or hurting yeah. somebody. Yeah. Hurting somebody else yeah. or that's how you get toxic relationships mm. and that. How do you handle those situations when you, when you meet people like that? Do you, is, <laughs> cause they're, they're exhausting. I've cut a lot of people out of my yeah. life because of these particular things. Um, and a lot of people now they, th those particular energetics don't really come around me. They just don't. Um, if I am confronted, then I will handle it as I need to. It's a very sort of uh, kid glove kind of way mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's also knowing what I'm dealing with. Like I already read the energy of people immediately when I, when I meet them. So I'm like, and I've always been able to do that. And yeah. now it's like, you've just become more present. Hi yeah. More heightened. Huh? <laughs> yes. And um, so now I'm just like, you know, I get a very energetic feel already and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, <laughs> and I don't try to pry because I could ask questions, you know, to them 
you know, and nobody would know everyone's asking questions because I don't need to ask like outright and use my voice. I could just use my inner voice okay. to talk to them. Um, so it's, you know, that's why I can sit there and listen to you. But, but do you, do you find that sometimes <laughs> there are people who, cause, cause there are, there are people who are, uh, without even asking, they'll tell you everything about themselves. Yes. Yes. I get that quite a lot. I've gotten that pretty much all my life. Um, and it's also one of the reasons why I also tend to go out by myself a lot because okay. you meet people easier than with a group. Although I mean, I have plenty of friends that I go out with them as well, but, um, I've had many people just at a bar and just start telling me their entire life story. Never asked them. Like, yeah. And yeah. I'm just like, and I'm like, okay. And so the funny thing is everything that I've gone through in my life, because I've gone through quite a bit, um, has helped me to understand where other people are and help to give that advice when it is needed. And that's kind of what it is. I mean, uh, I had to experience these things or else uh, I wouldn't quite understand what they're going through. And I do know a lot of people are going through some really seriously bad relationships. And I like, I understand because I've been through it and it's like, it's very difficult. And I'm like, it's very, very mm-hmm. difficult. And it takes a lot of healing for some of these, especially narcissistic relationships. I said, that's kind of things. But I'm always like, you can make it through. It's going to be very, and I'm always upfront with people. I'm like, I wish I could tell you it was going to be easy and it's a cakewalk. It's not. It's going to be really painful. It's going to be difficult, but you can't do this. You can't do this. But that's like part of the meditation, part of the releasing, part of, you You know, all of this has to, to, to come into play to help someone move out of a situation. And it's a slow process. And some days you're feeling fucking great and on top of the world. And other days you're like fucking like crying in the corner. And that's just part of the healing process, you know? So it's a lot. <laughs> I, um, I don't, I don't think I ask superficial questions on the podcast with, mm. with the guys I talk to and with you, it's on another level every single fucking time <laughs> like, like, watching your path, right. You know, on YouTube and on Twitter and everything that you do is so interesting to me. I think that, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You, you don't come across a lot of people like you, uh, in this industry, but in general too, it's, it's not yeah. easy to find a lot of yeah. people who are very open to what, uh, information is being, uh, this is very true. Given to you. This is very true. I, I, I tend to forget that because I'm not outside of my life. Like I forget a lot of the things that I've already done in my life. And yeah, I don't, because I'm here in it in the present. <laughs> so it's very uh, uh, difficult. And I've gotten people like, you know, they're just some people kind of in awe of it. And it, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be recognized uh, for the things that you bring to the table, but it's also it, keeping a level headed about it. Because again, you don't like the ego doesn't need, you know, it's nice to have a little ego just because it's like confidence wise, but you don't want to like get this uh, like, oh yeah, I'm better than you. But no, that's not the case. And I have, and I will, I, I know now when the ego tries to come out and it doesn't happen very often anymore because I pretty much have you know, yeah, I don't see it. I, I don't slap yeah. the bitch around and lock <laughs> in the corner. I said, Yo, go back to your room. <laughs> You're not released from it altogether, but you right. can control it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't see a lot of ego in you at all. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm just really relaxed. I'm mean, going to get me wrong. It's, it's, it's. It, there's also one thing too. It's very interesting, which I found out through other stuff. Is that apparently, and I, this is really weird. Is it because, you know, Tykel is one of my yeah, wingmen? Yeah. It's karma. Why not? Hmm, okay. So strange, but all right. Um, apparently, like, I'm also, like, kind of where the buck stops. Like, yeah. Like, I don't, you don't want to mess with me because then you want to, like, if you mess with other people and I'm, like, the last, the next one you were mess with, that, it's karma, babes. Yeah. I'm kind of, like, the end end of it. And I didn't realize that. And I don't do anything. It's not like I do a spell or anything. It's just that's the way it is. It's like, it's like, oh no, because anytime that you're dealing with somebody who is trying to do spiritual work, who's really doing the universe's work and you try to fuck with that, oh, it's not going to be good. Yeah. I wouldn't fuck with that. <laughs> I'm, not, like, I'm not doing anything to these people. I'm not wishing anybody bad. I'm not yeah. sending, I don't do black spells or any of that bullshit. Um, 
and I'm like highly protected. So because of the energy around me, if anybody is trying to send spells or negative energy, it literally bounces back and it's usually comes back in bigger folds yeah. for them. And I'm just like, oh, not a good idea. And I've seen it happen now, which is interesting that I'm w- aware of it. And it's, it's not, again, it's not, not nothing I'm doing. It's just, that's the way the universe has decided that that was going to happen. Mm. And no doubt there's other people like me, um, I like my, my friend Katrina, she said she can shield people and she can help heal them with, you know, people that have entities attached to them, but she can't destroy them. And she had to talk to her guys too. She's not, she's not able to do that, but she's able to at least help protect and help heal. So it's, this is again, a different level. And like everyone has their different things. And of course, as we continue, more people will also be waking up spiritually, more gifts coming into play, things like that. Those were, that are here to do certain jobs, to to, to do certain work. And it really is. I like, again, I don't think of this as like, (laughs) yeah, it's not like on a high horse. It's like, Oh my God, I am so humbled that the universe has entrusted me to do this because when you're working this close with the universe, you don't want to, you know, yeah. you don't play with karma that way. You don't play with ego. You don't, you just don't because it, it will come back. <laughs> the universe will not be very happy about that. <laughs> you're like a warrior. So yeah, yeah. Well, it almost spells itself a spiritual warrior. So yeah. it's, it's really kind of true. It's the things that people can't see, but they're, this is a spiritual war. It's just more so than anything else, but people don't, quite realize it i mean again more people are waking up to it they're kind of understanding that something's else is there something's or something is also off um so it's going to be kind of interesting to see how things play out um also with my abilities i'm kind of kind of curious to see how that happens yeah me too um especially with them finally seeing my my spirit guys and whatnot i did see them one night actually there was a cloaked figure when i was first having my weight my my um dark night this all those years ago at the foot of my bed. And the funny thing is I told my spirit guys, I said, listen, I said, just don't show up. Like, don't mean to turn around the corner and there you are. Like, please don't do that. Like, just don't fucking freak me yeah, out. Yeah. All right. And I told them this. All right. And so one night I'm like, you know, and I can some feeling sometimes them brush my head and that they will touch me. I can feel their energetic touch, which is very interesting. And so I said, you know, when am I getting my sight? Well, not. So one night I just, I'm sleeping, but, but I wake up like it, I guess it was like three 30 and I mean, bolt out of bed. Like, I mean, boom, boom, like, like not just like, and at the foot of my bed was a figure kind of smirking at me, kind of almost looked like me a bit. And it, it's, I was like, huh? And then I was like, wait, no, go. Because it was literally fading oh, from the back yeah. background. And it was like, and I said to them, I said, do you, was that you guys are like, yes. And I said, I, and I, and because I told them not to do things like, but then I get it because I'm not, they're not going to have any control over, say, if I see ghosts or other, other entities, they're going to show up when they show up like outside, not in the house, but around, I'm not going to have any control of that. And they're like, you're going to have to kind of get used to this. And I'm like, gotcha. And I said, how did I do? They're like, good. You did good. I'm like, okay. Okay. Damn. I was like, yeah, I was like, I guess it was like shock because I literally just, it was boom up a bed. I'm like, and there it was. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> well, no, I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing your, your next, your next level. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy having you on. I hope that you, uh, I hope that you come on every season <laughs> for as long as I'm capable of doing this. When people want to find you, where, where do they go? You, for my Instagram, it's I am Adam Keith. I am Adam Keith. And that's like the, the acting, the spiritual part. And then I'm also on Twitter, the same thing with that. And, um, Adam Russo, triple X for Twitter, for, you know, all of your porn sensation. Yeah. You know, to watch you. Yeah. <laughs> watch you on a different, on another level too. Like, Oh, different, different um, level. you're a, this is demystifying gay porn. Uh, we are on every podcast directory. We are on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, TikTok's an interesting one. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. Um, this is Adam Russo, Adam Keith, uh, spiritual gangster, spiritual warrior. Um, I have to thank you again for being on the show. I absolutely appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. No please. problem, please. <laughs> uh, you can come on anytime. <laughs> okay. uh, guys, you must define gay porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. And so is he. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>